So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Trigger 2 to complement my drum productions. The first is a fast and easy noob solution, which I use all the time. And the second is a more of an advanced setup, which gives you more control over the bleed. And the last one is my pro tip to you. So if you're a wannabe pro, stick around to the end and take your productions to the next level. Next. So let's jump right into the first noob way. I got a Cubase project open here. Here we've got a snare top microphone. I just plug it in as an insert. Grab your desired sample, put it in, and use the mix knob to mix in the sample with the original drum performance. It's that easy. This Trigger 2 software is pretty extensive. I want to keep this video short and fast. If you already own this, you know how this thing works. If not, go look up some uh, some tutorials online. A ton of content creators already covered this thing. They put in some new features, which I really like on the newest updates, like the link tuning knob. It will link up all the, all the microphones for you. You can flip the phase in one time. You can view the curves and and link them as well this is really handy to quickly do all the microphones because if you have a an extensive microphone setup like our vk cast bronze uh, drum yeah you don't want to individually you can if you want but if you want to shorten the sound or whatever the f you want to do yeah then you can link it up and really easily shorten the sound or make the attack a little less or whatever anywho i digress this is not a tutorial about trigger 2 this is how i use it so back to the new version put it on an insert set up the triggering where it should trigger and mix it up with the mix knob the pros of, of this system is really fast and easy the cons are you have less control over the bleed on a microphone for example if you have some tom that is bleeding all over the snare microphone it will trigger the sample which you don't want obviously because you're replacing the snare not the tom sound you have to or automate this detail uh, thing i think you can do that if not slate Go fix that another downside of this system is you can't really shape the sound of the snare sample itself if you're mixing it up with the original snare sound so it's always going to be an, a combined sound which gives you less control and what do we music producers and sound engineers love is control over the sound with that said let's get over to the second way which gives you more control over the bleed and the sample and the sound so the second way you can do this is setting up trigger through an aux channel or a group channel in cubase or whatever the hell some daws call this what you're essentially doing is creating a, dif a different track putting trigger on it and what you do is send a signal this is the microphone the recorded top microphone of the snare drum which i want to replace or complement with the snare uh, with the sample so i'm sending this signal to the trigger fx channel but i'm sending it to the left so the snare the actual recorder snare i'm sending to an aux channel to the left side of the left input of trigger not through the middle not through the right to the left so this is my left this is your left so how you do that in in, in cubase is here so this is the send then go to panning yeah this is not the actual channel panning that's, that's here so for example you don't want trigger to get triggered by the kick bleed on the or the tom bleed so what you're doing here on the kick channel you're also sending a send to the snare sample channel aux or group whatever the the, the channel where you inserted the trigger and you pan that to the right so your right is this one, but my right is the right. So this will tell Trigger not to trigger on that signal. You can send all of the toms, you can send all, send all of the kick drums to the right side of the Trigger input and it won't get triggered by that sound. You need to set up this suppress button to the right level and there you go. 
no extra triggering you just got a channel with just the sample when you put this to 100% mix right and that gives you tons more control over the sound you can send the sample just through reverbs which gives you a more of consistent a consistent sound in reverb you can eq the, the sample more you can even take the snare sound out of it the original snare you take it out and just use 100 of the sample easy peasy lemon squeezy you just have to know how to set this up so input trigger which he needs to trigger to the left side of the input everything he doesn't needs to react to to the right side of the input set the suppress level and you're good to go now you can see the the red the red hits are the bass drum which he doesn't need to trigger this really sucks Don't break my balls. I need to make this, uh, these Cubase projects a lot smaller to record this properly. But okay, whatever. It's all about the message, not about the sound. You get the idea, right? So the pros on this setup is it, it doesn't really trigger on bleed of the microphones really great the cons are it takes some it takes some more time to set this up and you need to understand how this works properly you can refer to the manual of trigger 2 if you forgot where to send the signals but if you use this on a regular basis you won't forget it anymore so now up to the pro tip what i like to do if i want really maximum control no double triggers no bullshit in my recordings i edit everything what does that mean first maybe fix timing issues if there's any but then i cut out all of the empty space like this so how do i do that you just select a part for example this one in cubase i go to audio advanced detect silence if you want you can put it on a shortcut on your keyboard to the right set uh, the threshold and then just cut process everything Brap! then you need to go in there it could be cut out some fills or whatever so you need to check everything and if there's no other hits in there like a tom hit still in there you just need to go through all of the all of the hits and all of the channels bass drum snare drums toms i do everything in cubase you can select everything for example uh, we just do this part and i want this uh, i want the event to start exactly there you can also uh, hit, uh, set up the detect silence with less pre-roll or less post roll if you put this to five milliseconds then it, it will cut it shorter but my logic is i have to go through it anyway so i'll check it and edit on the way then i go to length here i select all the events and i put in around 50 whatever the f that is 50 something you have to hold down command and on a window system it should be control or something figure it out hold it down command or control and then hit enter then it will make all the events the same length in one time really great but also the fills and everything so you need to stretch these back out so this takes some time to do right but once done you will never have to be afraid of some bullshit hit somewhere that that triggers some stuff randomly the first time it doesn't trigger the second time around it triggers i get really annoyed by that stuff so if i want a perfectly sounding drum performance i edit everything out you can if you want if you need a really consistent snare hit normalize it because you're using a sample anyways uh, you can duplicate the track so you use one original and one edited you can blend these two possibilities are endless so for the, for example this is just a to cut four to the floor stuff and you want the straight hits to be consistent as f then go to offline processing uh, normalize and set the threshold the maximum peak level to what you want it to be and all the hits because it's going to be the sample playing are going to be the same level really nice and consistent 
beautiful and this you can do with bass drums you can do this with toms if you need so it doesn't matter where you recorded this drum kit it does because room mics and overheads are a really big part of the sound right but if you're in a really small bedroom where you recorded your drums go to our website we've got some free expansion packs there and replace the bass drum and the toms and the and the and the and the snare sounds so you could create a really great sounding good performance by editing it like this and using great samples right ratpackdrums.com you can download some free expansion packs there and we'll be adding every month more so if you need some stuff leave it in the comments tell me what the f you need i'll see what i can do you edit it everything on all the tracks or the tracks you want it to be replaced or enhanced by samples put on a trigger you don't really need to uh, focus on this details thing just put it to zero because you edited everything out that's not supposed to be on this track put the mix uh, on 100 use it in conjunction with the original track or not whatever and that's it and you've got full control every hit is just the way you want it so the con on this system is uh, on this way it's it's a lot of work right you have to edit everything you have to check everything channel for channel and if you have a big uh, drum piece drum setup yeah then uh, it's a few hours of work to do all of the tracks right but once done it's done muy bella muy bien so if you like this content please give it a like so i know uh, i need to make more of this stuff so i click on this video if you want to learn a bit more about how i think about compression and how i use compression on my drum productions thanks for watching jonathan out